A few months back, my friend Sam and I split a wrecked 2015 P85D Tesla with the vomit-inducing 2.9 seconds to 60 ludicrous plus mode. When it arrived from the salvage auction on a trailer to my house, it was in pretty rough shape. It had a bunch of broken parts in the front, including the subframe. We found damage to the aluminum roof. Metal panels in the rear were pushed in and destroyed, and it had a major battery coolant system leak. Being a Tesla Tesla with little to no out of warranty support, the scariest part were all the warning lights on the dash and the range indicator at zero miles. Now we had just paid $25,000 for this 41,000 mile Tesla, and I'm not gonna lie, it was a little intimidating, but after fully inspecting our new EV, I made a parts list, Sam flew in and we got to work. Now call it luck, a total coincidence or precise planning and staging for a YouTube video, but we even ran into Rich Rebuilds himself and convinced him to help out and all it took was some chicken. We got this Tesla back at Alex's place. It's got... Come on, Rich. I'll get you some Chick-fil-A. Get me an eight piece of Popeyes, we'll call it even. You got it. Let's do it. Now, unfortunately, they were totally out of chicken sandwiches, but I had an idea. If we ordered the tenders, could we have them put on a uh, sandwich with some pickles? Hello? Ma'am, are you there? That's a legitimate question. Yeah, I think, I think it's a fair question. You know, we rebuild cars. We have to think outside of the yeah, box. Right. All right, that didn't work out, but luckily they had Rich's eight-piece in stock, and we found out that because the electrified garage Rich's EV shop is so busy and doing so well, Rich will basically work for food. So we took him out to fancy places like Wendy's and the Chicago famous Superdog. Now, if you'd like to see how we fixed a lot of this Tesla at home, I'll leave some links down below. But after I bled the battery's cooling system, which took forever, we took the Tesla to the supercharger station. Let me oh, help you with that. No, thank you. Thank you. All right, ready? Oh yeah, it's in. It successfully supercharged for free, which is pretty cool, and it would totally suck if one day Elon watched my videos and blacklisted my car and removed supercharging altogether. But let's cross our fingers that that never happens. So with the Tesla moving under its own power, it was time for some body work. The car might look all put together from here, but the roof was still damaged, and there was a lot of damaged metal behind the rear bumper. And since I had bought Sam out of this project at this point, and the car was totally mine, I wanted to do it right and I wanted to update my Tesla with a few cosmetic upgrades like black chrome wheels, a carbon fiber spoiler, and a complete refresh body kit. So off to Mancuso's we go. Mancuso Collision Custom in Glenview, Illinois has fixed two of my AMG cars. They do amazing work and their paint is top notch. So since they are also a Tesla approved body shop, I knew exactly where to go. They assessed the roof damage and I was happy to hear that this really expensive aluminum roof panel didn't need to be replaced because they have a Tesla approved tool that can repair aluminum. So the first step was disassembly of the interior, including the complete removal of this really delicate and expensive Alcantara headliner. To do this, Nick, the technician, had to take out most of the interior, including the rear seats, which gives you a really good look at some high voltage components of the car. With Nick working, the crew started on the removal of the front windshield. Now it is possible to remove the headliner. This could have come out the back, but at Mancuso's they did not want to risk anything. They didn't want to take any chances with creases. So this was definitely the best option. All right, so Nick is almost done dropping the headliner. And even though this is a hard top car, so there's no motors for the uh, glass roof or anything, there are a ton of connectors and wiring harnesses. So all of that had to be disconnected after he removed basically all of the trim. Uh, and Billy's gonna come over here and help because this is such a delicate piece. They don't want it to get creased at all. Uh, and that's why, of course, they took out the windshield, as I said. So we can kind of see that that extra work definitely paid off because it looks like this thing is gonna come out perfectly through the front of the car. And there you have it. Look at that, the entire Alcantara headliner in one nice piece. And now we're gonna have a ton of room to work on the inside of that metal roof. All right, so with that headliner fully removed from the Tesla, we can take a look at this damage, this major crease right here from the inside. So there she is, right there is that crease. I know it doesn't look like too much from in here. And something that's a little interesting is that you can't see any of the other damage from the inside. So obviously 
the crease is the major damage, but this part here is also a little bit pushed in as well. Uh, but you cannot tell from the inside. So this is what one of these hard top Tesla cars looks like with the headliner removed. Not a whole lot going on in here. And the reason we removed the headliner was not to do the repair from the inside. They're actually gonna be setting up some special aluminum panel tools approved by Tesla on the top of the roof, but they don't wanna risk drilling through or poking through and damaging that headliner or any wiring harnesses or anything that may have been under there. So that's why that was removed. So I'm gonna show you guys, uh, we're gonna get a little demonstration on how they set up these tools here in a minute. Uh, but meanwhile, the guys took the rear bumper off so I can show you guys a little bit better uh, the damage that was done here in the right corner. So you can see here uh, something smacked this area. This is folded in and on the bottom here, if you guys can see this, there is a bracket right there. I bought it from Tesla new and that got damaged as well. So we can't mount up any of the plastics that go underneath this car. But as you guys saw in the other videos, this car was able to have the rear bumper fully bolted on and you couldn't tell that anything was damaged underneath. So if you guys buy a previously wrecked car, maybe something at a salvage auction, possibly something with a clean title that has an accident on the Carfax, it's possible that it went to a shop where they didn't do any of the repairs back here at all and just slapped the body panels over damaged areas because there are no mounting points for the bumper back here. So you could just simply cover this up with the bumper and call it a day. So coincidentally in the shop at Mancuso's, they have two Lexuses and they were both rear ended. Uh, and this one here, you can see they're replacing a large panel that attaches to the trunk panel and to the quarter panel of the car. And that is right here. This is the new one. So that is gonna be attached right there and after they're done it's gonna look like this one right here so they just finished uh putting this back on so there's a lot of little spot welds that need to be drilled out there is panel bond as well uh, but these are little sections of the car that are replaceable anywhere where you see like a little fold like this that is a replaceable section that is a part that you can actually buy from the manufacturer so on the tesla there are three or four of these pieces back there that can be replaced uh, and obviously we're going to be concentrating in this corner on that car uh, and hoping that we can salvage at least the trunk panel and maybe just replace some of the easier, smaller corner pieces. All right, so we are getting ready to pull this aluminum panel over here. And uh, you always want to keep in mind, you want to keep the headliner dropped down while you're doing any kind of tap uh, welding. So you don't start any fires. And we already have one welded on here. And what we're gonna do, we already have a little pressure on it. So we're just gonna go ahead and relieve the pressure around it. This will slowly bring the dent back outward. There you go. After Ted pulled all the dents, a special aluminum body filler was applied to the roof and about 90% of this gets sanded away so that only a small amount is used where the creases and the dents couldn't be raised all the way. After getting the panel perfectly smooth, a primer is sprayed on to seal the area and this is what it looks like right before paint. Next up was the metalwork in the rear and removing these parts basically consists of drilling many spot welds, heating up the panel bond and pulling the panels right off the car. Afterwards, you're left with a ton of cleanup work that involves a lot of grinding and sanding because none of the old seam sealer and none of the old panel bond can remain. All right, so after a couple days of basically grinding, cutting, and drilling, the guys at Mancuso's have all of the rear metal panels off that they're gonna be replacing, and these get pretty mangled on their way out, which is fine. We're putting brand new pieces back on, but you can see where the auction uh, had marked where they were damaged. So in the accident, they ran something over uh, and it kind of just dented in all of these panels. You can see right in here, we have this bracket that's pretty bad and you could probably straighten this stuff out, pound it back into shape somewhat. The bumper covers most of this, uh, but a more proper repair is just to replace it all with new parts from Tesla and that's exactly what we're doing. So let me show you how they're installing these new panels by basically gluing and riveting them back on. So the trunk pan is about to go back in and this is how most modern cars are basically held together as far as uh, thin panels like this. It's with panel bond and rivet. So right now Alex is spreading the panel bond around and you have about a 90 minute work time with this. So you have about 90 minutes to get it all set up on the panel and installed on the car and then it requires a 24 hour dry time. So he's gonna spread it around, make sure he covers every little part. It's going back on the car and then he's immediately putting the rivets on 
so it's all held into place. All right, so you can see here on the back uh, right side corner, this panel had already been replaced, so this needed to go in first, and it was already riveted in. That way they could attach the rest of the entire trunk pan, uh, and this part of the quarter panel, uh, they had to straighten out a little bit, but they had to uh, kind of move this aluminum around, no big deal, uh, but everything is gonna line up perfectly like factory, and something uh, very interesting, if you guys notice the orange marks and the black marks, that's because from the factory, this is aluminum spot welded. So this is where the factory aluminum spot weld was. But since really the only the factory has an aluminum spot welder, Tesla tells you uh, that you have to drill a hole and put the rivet in a certain amount of space away from the original aluminum spot weld. So these are the proper markings from Tesla and they require you to use special rivets. And the guys told me there's like five different kinds. It's kind of a pain in the butt, but they have to use the right size in the right place uh, in order for this panel to be held into their specifications. And here's the final piece of the puzzle in the rear. So this is a large panel that was damaged primarily in this corner here. And this panel meets up with the trunk pan and this was all smashed in as well. Uh, so now it is brand new, nice and pretty looking right from Tesla. Uh, and he just test fitted it on here because you wanna make sure that all your holes are gonna line up before you apply the panel bond. So the orange stuff right here, that's the factory Tesla panel bond that they had to scrape off pretty much everything. So now that we know this lines up perfectly, he'll be applying the panel bond. Uh, and then this is held in with bolts right into the frame rail and then a bunch of rivets and panel bond everywhere. So once this is set in there, this back part is completed. After 24 hours, this stuff will be dried into place and they can start reassembling the rest of the car. So we won't get the rear bumper on just yet. I'm gonna have them repaint that with the updated front bumper uh, and some new parking sensors that we bought. So, and the roof, that's all gonna get painted at one time. So the paint match is spot on. So some of you guys commented in the other videos, maybe you commented in this video, Alex, why didn't you update the front bumper on this car? Especially because both of the bumpers were damaged from the accident and you updated the rear bumper. No one does that. Well, the reason is I got the original front nose cone for like $100 used and we just needed something to get going. But I always had intentions of putting the updated front bumper on my P85D and here it is. It's from T Sportline. Uh, and you guys may have heard that if you put the updated Tesla front bumper on these version one model S cars, that the hood doesn't line up. And that is true. That's because Tesla uses a different hood on the updated cars. They've made this bumper in-house themselves to specifically fit on the version one model S car. So you don't have to replace the hood. So you save a ton of money and it comes with everything. So you get the chrome trim right here, and then you get little templates uh, to easily drill out in the front bumper for whatever style parking sensors or autopilot or whatever version you have. So the guys here are simply just going to drill some really easy holes in this front bumper before paint and then it's going on the car and this thing's going to look like a newer model for a lot less money than sourcing a new hood and a bunch of other little parts that Tesla requires you to buy to update the front bumper with the factory one. All right guys so it's a new day here at Mancuso's and today and tomorrow they are painting the Model S and I am so excited because this car is really, really coming together and we decided to do another upgrade. So of course we're doing the updated front bumper and I figured why not do these lower rocker panels as well. So on the newer Model S, the updated version, they are painted to match the body color of the car. And on my car and the older ones, they were an unpainted, just kind of flat black textured kind of material. Uh, so anyway, they're gonna paint that as well. And once the car goes in the paint booth, all of this new metal work, uh, we'll get a primer sealer on there, and then they're also going to paint portions of this the factory silver body color, so right in here. And then it won't have any clear coat, just like the factory most automakers. They wanna save money anywhere that they can, and there's really no point to clear coat uh, these parts like the frame and the inner trunk well. So they will get painted silver for the most part, uh, then that will be completely done, ready for the rear bumper cover 
uh, to go on after that's painted. But speaking of paint, a metallic silver is very difficult to match. So these are two samples of the actual Tesla color from Tesla. You can't even really trust those 100%. I know it's gonna be really hard for you guys to tell on camera, but these do not match perfectly. This one's darker, this one's lighter. Uh, so Lupe, the painter, he's the one who did my C63, fantastic job. Uh, he kind of made his own and this is by far the closest. So again, I know right now it might not match perfectly to you guys, uh, but with an actual paint light on, that is our best bet. And for anybody who gave Sam Crack any crap for painting the front and rear bumpers on this car the wrong color, let me tell you, it is easy to mess this up. This actually does not look that bad. Today's an exciting day at Mancuso's. We got our new floor mats. <laughs> Just kidding, I ordered these a few months ago. I forget what brand they are or if they even fit. I haven't tried them. Uh, we'll try that out here in a minute, but take a look at the P85D. The guys here have been working hard today, getting it all pieced back together. We have the painted side skirts. So now this is going to look like a newer model. So long gone is the flat black plastic look. They are painted the body color, looking really good. They smoothed it out perfectly. It looks factory. And they've reassembled a lot of the interior. We have the crash bar back on. We have our latch. All the carpeting uh, is back together. We still have some trim parts to put on. And the headliner, I believe for the most part, is in here. Let's take a look. Yeah, so the headliner is in the car. They have to wrap up. Uh, a few things, obviously, but wait a minute, hang on a second, what is that on the screen? Oh yeah, we got a software update. Awesome, awesome, awesome. It'll take 50 minutes, cool, I'll do that. We got 125 miles of range, and these things do suck down a couple miles every day just sitting here, uh, but take a look at what they just bolted on. We have the T-Sport line updated front bumper. This looks awesome. <laughs> oh my gosh, with the painted side skirts and the updated rear bumper, this is gonna look perfect. We got our brand new Tesla T. This chrome comes with the bumper kit. Uh, and so far, so good. It's fitting pretty nice on here. All these sensors have been painted. So really, once we're done with this, it's gonna look like a much newer model. But let me show you guys the wheels that we're putting on. And here they are, my new 21-inch Tesla turbine wheels. And they were in the factory silver finish, which looks pretty good, but I wanted something different. Now, a lot of these wheels uh, come in a gray finish from Tesla, but I'd always wanted to experiment with something called black chrome. So my guys at Chicago Wheel in Elk Grove Village, Illinois, were able to finish these in a medium black chrome, and I'm absolutely in love with this finish, guys. I'm not sure if the camera's gonna be able to give it justice, but basically what we have here is in some lights it looks chrome, in some lights it looks black, sometimes it looks gray. It honestly kind of messes with your eyes, so I'm not sure if you guys are gonna be able to experience uh, what I'm seeing right now. Now, one thing I have to do, though, is figure out what we're doing with the center cap. It's partially plastic, so they couldn't powder coat that, uh, so we'll probably paint it like a gloss black or something like that but anyway very very excited and I think we should just go ahead and bolt these on oh yeah this is looking awesome we can't fully bolt them on because they still have to put the fender liners uh, in but I just mocked them up 
Look at that, guys. Look at that. This is exactly what I was thinking. They look so, so good. Take a look in the front. Oh my gosh. I honestly cannot believe this is my car. <laughs> so cool, so cool. So something we have to figure out uh, is these lugs. I think I might actually just leave them just like this. I was thinking I'd have to paint them black, but that looks pretty good. Uh, the center caps, they weren't able to powder coat them, so they are in paint right now being painted gloss black, but I think that's gonna look really, really good. Oh my gosh, I cannot wait. And check out another little goodie that we got in the mail. We have a carbon fiber little spoiler. So this is gonna go like so. Yeah, there we go. All right. <laughs> oh, look at this. Sweet, this looks so good. We got the updated rear bumper. That's freshly painted going on next, and this car is really coming together. All right, guys, I'm gonna end the episode right here. The guys at Mancuso's have a bunch of work to finish up the Tesla, and we're gonna have the grand reveal in the next video, along with me trying to fix some of the warning lights in the cluster, and I have a new at-home charging station I'm gonna show you guys as well. So I hope you stay tuned for that. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button, share the video, subscribe if you're new, and most importantly, have an awesome day. I'll catch all of you in the next video.